Thank you so much, Jason, and thank you everybody for joining us today. I've come here to talk to you and walk you through one of our most compelling security products on Azure, and these are Azure Confidential VMs powered by the latest generation of AMD processors. Now, the reason I love this product is that it brings together two highly desired worlds. Uh, the public cloud with its scale, efficiency, reliability, the ease of maintenance, and the private data center, which is characterized by tight controls, ownership, and privacy. But with uh, Azure Confidential VMs, as we will see, the two become one. Uh, let me make just a quick disclaimer here. Many of the things we're about to share with you today, they're still under preview. And even though I'm going to try to furnish you with the best available information, product plans, features, capabilities, these things, as you know, they can change. They might be reordered because we always try to adapt to what our customers need and want. So just take that into account. And for those um, not too familiar with confidential computing, let me start this session with a quick level set. I'll take something like five minutes to walk you through how we define Azure Confidential Computing and some of the different options that our customers have for deploying confidentially on Azure. I will then switch gears to focus on confidential VM specifically, talking about the security benefits and why I think you should seriously consider them for some of your most sensitive VMs on Azure. I'll try to give you some ideas for what kind of business scenarios and what kind of workloads make the most sense for CVMs or confidential VMs. And we'll summarize by going over the preview that's available today and some additional capabilities that we're going to introduce pretty soon. Um, if you have questions, uh, again, just type them into the chat window and Rune Kai from my team, she'll be happy to answer them live if we can. And if we have any other questions, we can take them during the closing part of this session. Um, so please make sure to let me know your thoughts, your questions, your ideas, any concerns. We love hearing from you. So uh, first things first, what is confidential computing? Confidential computing at the heart of it is focused on protecting data while it is in use. It's critical, of course, to protect data while it's at rest and while it's in motion, but that last frontier of protecting data as it's being processed, that remains the most stubborn part of protecting data from unwanted access. And that's exactly what confidential computing is about. Now, for us in Microsoft Azure, confidential computing is a multi-dimensional enterprise. It starts with the contributions and the leadership that we make and give to the Confidential Computing Consortium, or CCC. Now, this is an umbrella project of the Linux Foundation, and it's made up of a very diverse group of members. It has cloud providers like Microsoft and Google, hardware vendors, including Intel, ARM, AMD, and software vendors like Red Hat and Meta, and many, many others. Now, together, what this group does is we define and develop the specifications, the building blocks, frameworks, the services, all of the things that you need to enable a thriving ecosystem for protecting data in use and allowing it to be processed confidentially. So Microsoft is clearly heavily invested in this space by the standards that we set, the research, the innovation of future capabilities, and bringing it all into those cloud scale products that let organizations go confidential with the architectures that they want and the tools that they need. This spans IaaS, infrastructure products, PaaS, so platform level developments and deployments, um, numerous cloud services and applications, various development frameworks and tools, and you can see all of these things on this slide. 
But today, as I said, we're going to focus on infrastructure and specifically our all new AMD based confidential VMs, which for a lot of customers, this is actually what they're looking for to reach their confidential goals. So out of this whole panoply of options, even if you just focus on this, you can make tremendous strides forward on your organization's confidentiality. One way to envisage confidential VMs compared to that entire spectrum of confidential computing options that we saw on the previous slide is if we place confidential VMs on this axis. So this is an axis that prioritizes ease of use and deployment on one side and security controls on the other side. Let me take an example to uh, try to illustrate the difference. If what you want is to design a new business application and leverage the industry's finest software and hardware tools to wrap your application's confidential data so that it has absolute minimum exposure to outside code and even silicon, then we suggest you look into VMs with secure hardware enclaves. <clears throat> and we offer VMs like that and all the supporting accessories to help you in the deployment of that. That's the most control side. But if you already have workloads and applications that require confidentiality, then you just maybe want to use them as is on the public cloud, but you still want a tight confidentiality boundary to surround your VM. In that case, confidential VMs, I think that's the best vehicle for such a scenario. And there are also options in between. So for example, you might have containerized workloads. And if that speaks to you, then you should look up confidential containers on Azure and you can find out more about it. One thing uh, we recommend, regardless of which confidential model is the right one for you, is to watch this newly published YouTube video by John uh, Seville. What John does is he goes over that spectrum that I touched on and he strikes just the right balance, I think, between clarity and details. He really does a fantastic job and you should check it out. I created this uh, shortened URL if that helps. So you can go to aka.ms slash ACC by John and he's going to walk over some of the things we talk about today, but he also covers some other deployment options that you saw on that axis. Now, whatever your choice is for how you want to deploy confidentially, it's important to understand what threats you're actually protected against. If you want all in on confidential computing and you want to harness the tightest and most rigid perimeter around your confidential data using something like VMs with secure hardware enclaves, then your data would be protected against these six things that you see here. So number one, starting with the top left uh, item there, is your confidential computing's, uh, sorry, your virtual machine's OS. So in case the OS gets compromised, your confidential data doesn't. The second item there is the virtual machines administrator. So that's going to be the person in your organization that manages the VM. It could be you, could be someone else. Um, the third thing is the hypervisor and the underlying Azure uh, stack that orchestrates the server and the tenant virtual machines. Then you're also protected from the Azure admins that manage and control the physical servers themselves and any other control plane service that runs on Azure. And last but not least, bootkits. Bootkits can infect the boot chain of your virtual machine, for instance, by attacking the firmware portion of it. So with this model, you get protection from all of it. And this scope of cloud protection is so, so comprehensive that I think you're really going to be hard pressed to find on-prem deployments that can genuinely offer you so many protections. Now, at the other end of this, we have the 
trusted launch capability. This has been in general availability since November, and it adds protection against bootkits. The good thing is that all you have to do, if that's what you want, is just if you're using the portal, you go to the security type drop down menu and you select trusted launch. It's really as easy as that. You get this immediate benefit and now it's available for a large and growing set of Azure VMs uh, across different sizes and series. And in between, in terms of the protection scope, we have our new confidential VMs powered by AMD, and they feature a very strong hardware boundary that surrounds your VM. It protects your VM from external entities, including Azure data center administrators, including uh, Microsoft's foundational software stack and other services on the cloud fabric. Now, what isn't different with confidential VMs is that to your operating system and to your VM admin, everything remains the same. Because once you're inside a confidential VM, or if you're any component inside within a confidential VM, the world looks exactly the same to you. You're not going to notice a difference between a confidential VM and a general purpose VM because the sphere of confidentiality is the boundary separating your confidential VM and the world outside of it. So how do we achieve that? And what are the capabilities of a confidential VM that provide the protections that we just mentioned? So the core of this is AMD's Infinity Guard technology and the security capabilities that it makes possible for customers like you. With uh, the latest version of Infinity Guard, we can manage VMs that have their memory and their state encrypted with a runtime key that's generated by the CPU and never leaves the CPU. So if we look across the stack, and this includes the Azure operating system and a hypervisor for Microsoft, these are all privileged components, but if they try to access the memory of your virtual machine or any other, what they get back is data encrypted with a key that's never available to them. And it gets better than that because with secure nested paging, a feature of uh, or a new addition to Infinity Guard, we also get integrity protection. So components outside of your VM like the ones I mentioned, the hypervisor, the cloud operating system, not only can they not read your data, but they also can change your data without getting caught. So for example, replay attacks, data corruption attacks, memory remapping attacks, these and others are all effectively mitigated. And uh, on top of this, we use the CPU's attestation capabilities and what this allows us to do is it lets us ensure that we can only start a confidential VM or initialize a confidential VM if the underlying hardware and software stack is what we know to be a secure configuration. So that includes the exact versions of the Microsoft hypervisor and cloud operating system, the microcode from AMD, various firmware settings, and really anything that we uh, considered to be part of a healthy security foundation. All of these things are measured and attested by a secure processor inside the AMD CPU. And then we verify the content and authenticity of these statements using Microsoft Azure Attestation or MAA, which is an entirely separate confidential cloud service that validates environments that claim to be confidential, just like this one. There's many other features that you can read about online, including Secure Boot, which ensures that your VM boots with an operating system that wasn't tampered by anyone, and a virtual TPM, which is this separate crypto module or secrets vault, uh, which is dedicated and unique to your VM instance, and it provides additional attestation capabilities that you can use to remotely monitor and just establish trust that your confidential VM and that underlying stack that we talked about 
are what they should be. So we do this attestation as we boot your VM up, but you can do that too in a remote way at any point in time later. We've also added full disk encryption for the first time on Azure and not to be confused with regular disk encryption. What we do with FDE or full disk encryption, which is available only with confidential VMs, are well, we actually do three things and they really tighten the screws on code and data at rest. So first, we encrypt all disk partitions, which is why we call it full. So that includes the boot and root partitions, which are critical to the overall integrity of your virtual machine. And that's not typically the case. We think it should be. So we've worked with um, the Windows OS teams and with Canonical for Ubuntu to make sure that we have a selection of Linux and Windows images that support encrypting all partitions. The second thing is that we've created a free new service on Azure that seamlessly performs encryption for the OS disk of your confidential VM before it ever runs. And what this does is it eliminates what's known as TOFU, trust on first boot, where uh, you're only able to encrypt your disk after you've already launched from an unencrypted disk. So TOFU is no longer necessary. I should add that this uh, form of encryption or what we call pre-encryption in this case, this could, could uh, increase your VM encryption or creation time really by two or three minutes because your OS disk has to be encrypted before first boot, but it's entirely optional and you can choose to boot normally and perform your standard disk encryption with BitLocker or de-encrypt at any point in time later. The third benefit of this new disk encryption scheme is that with confidential VMs, the full disk encryption keys, they're now protected by the TPM of your virtual machine so that your disk encryption keys, they're not accessible to some cloud service or a key manager, but they are bound to your virtual machine, which is itself encrypted using a key that users own and control if they want to. And maybe most interestingly, this disk encryption key, which resides in the TPM, it is cryptographically sealed to a trusted measurement of the platform. So what this means is that in order to recreate the disk encryption key, your VM has got to boot with the correct bootloader code, with the correct settings, or the TPM is simply going to fail to regenerate that disk encryption key. And that means that your disk content cannot be accessed, cannot be read if the system is tampered, or if it's not the same TPM and uh, the same VM that the disk is bound to. So a very strong form of data at rest protection. In other words, uh, with confidential VMs, we protect and we encrypt data in all of its forms wherever it reaches. So it starts with data in transit where to tell you the truth Azure already offers the complete toolbox of security protocols and technologies that let you easily move encrypted data to the cloud from the cloud even between different cloud services. Um, but it also covers as we've seen protecting data when it resides in storage. And I just touched on the major enhancements there that you get with full disk encryption. And the industry first feature to pre-encrypt your OS disk. But most importantly, it is about protecting data in use. And that's made possible through the latest generation AMD Epic processors with Infinity Guard. And it all works transparently. I think this is the most exciting thing about this because your applications work just as easily. They don't need to be adapted in any way. They can run just as they would without any of these data protection features. Here you can see some of the most popular VM series that we have on Azure. And when we talk about confidential VMs, Today, you're going to find them in our general purpose category and in the memory optimized category. And 
in each of these categories or series, the confidential VM option runs on the same hardware configuration, processor and otherwise as its non-confidential counterpart. So let's zero in on these new DCA and ECA virtual machines. The DCA V5 to be exact series, um, these are confidential VMs for general purpose tasks. So they range in specifications from two virtual CPU cores up to 96 and from eight gigabytes of RAM up to 384 gigabytes. And they are almost the same as our DAV5 general purpose VMs, which are not confidential, but they're confidential. So we're using the same hardware configuration to offer two options, confidential and standard. On the right hand side, you can see our ECA V5 series, very similar, but it has double the RAM in each size option. So instead of eight gigabytes to 384 gigabytes, the range here is 16 gigabytes up to 672 gigabytes. And this makes these VMs very well suited to memory intensive uh, workloads like data warehousing, in-memory analytics and databases, business intelligence apps and stuff like that. But aside from RAM, all other aspects of DCA and ECA, they are the same. Maybe the last thing to note here, you might notice a little D just before the V5 in each of the sizes. So this D, it denotes that there is a local premium SSD storage, uh, which is built separately from the VM. And with every confidential VM, there's also the option of using remote storage instead of the premium SSD local storage. And if you choose remote storage, you can reduce your costs that way. So this doesn't show up on the table, but it's absolutely there. One of the uh, things that we're most proud about is the performance of Azure confidential VMs powered by this third generation of AMD Epic processors. And here you can see several benchmarks that compare confidential and non-confidential VMs of the same size, same specs running on Azure. The difference across most benchmarks is really quite negligible. And in a way you can think about this as almost proof that you can have your cake and eat it too. In other words, performance and confidentiality, they can coexist in perfect harmony. If you're interested in seeing more, you can see the full performance analysis on the AMD website. We've created a shortcut that you can check out, aka.ms slash dcasv5perf. So what will you get by deploying on VCA or ECA confidential VMs? Well, you get full control and ownership of your data, your customer's data, your intellectual property. You can do all that in the public cloud. You know, I hear from customers at least once a week how important this thing is for their compliance requirements, for improving the economics and operating expenses of their IT spend, and for peace of mind. And this is what we mean when we say that the public cloud meets the confidentiality of your private data center. And now it's possible thanks to technological capabilities that up until recently simply didn't exist. I mentioned customers and I can tell you that during the preview phase of confidential VMs, which is where we are now, we've had very successful deployments with a long list of customers. They include governments, banks, manufacturers, pharmaceuticals, healthcare providers, utilities, and more and more. And what's common to all such customers is that they realize the cloud is where they need to be. They want to shift existing workloads, existing data, and in the process of doing that, they still have to really minimize the threats to data privacy and data integrity. So confidential VMs strike an excellent balance for many of their workloads and especially the most critical and sensitive ones. And speaking of previews, 
it's now public. The capabilities of confidential VMs are becoming more and more comprehensive with every passing week. And even right now, you can go up there and uh, we're in preview, but the entire span of uh, VMs is available. As we said, DC series, DCA and ECA series, all sizes available to you. Two regions as of right now, so the West US region and North Europe region, they're up and available, supported by Linux and Windows options, and more and more are going to come with that full disk encryption support that we mentioned. Full disk encryption, absolutely part of that. With the TPM key sealing, you can do that with platform managed keys, which is a very seamless option for a single click VM creation, or you can bring your own keys and manage your own keys using Azure Key Vault or a managed HSM. As we said, pre-encryption is a very strong form of encryption because it doesn't expose your disk to any adversaries at any point in time, even on that first boot. So you can harness that, it's optional and it's available right now. And more features are coming very soon. So VMSS and VMSS Flex support, it's already there with a few limitations. Those limitations will go away very soon with full disk encryption. So we have VMSS right now, but if you need it with the full disk encryption, that is gonna come quite soon. Azure Backup and Restore in the coming month. Various use cases for deploying with Azure Compute Gallery, including some options for custom images. Um, the user attestable reports that I mentioned, so the ability for not only the platform to attest itself as it spins up your confidential VM, but also for you to do this remotely using a set of tools that we're going to make available and publish in the coming several months. And new regions are coming up across the United States, Europe, and even in Asia. Thanks a lot for keeping up with all of this info. I realized it was quite a bit to absorb. So um, to make it easy for you, here are some uh, very useful links. We hope that you can explore at your own pace, at your own convenience. They go into additional details about what these confidential VMs are, how you can get started, how you can deploy. We have an FAQ that's worth reviewing if you have any lingering questions that uh, you still don't have answered after this session. So please check all of this out. If you have any questions, uh, Rune and I will be happy to take them now, or you can email our team at acc-preview at microsoft.com. And with that, we can go uh, to the Q&A section. Great, uh, thank you. Um, we do have a few questions. Uh, Ron's been great in answering some, but uh, there are still a few more. Uh, so the first one is, uh, is Azure Compute going to be available for Azure File Share? So uh, let me take that offline. I'm not sure um, what we refer to by Azure Compute. Is this about Azure Confidential Compute? Great, we'll wait for them to give clarification. I'll move on to the next one. Um, do confidential VMs support ITAR export control regulatory? ITAR, okay, that's a good question. Um, I'm not sure if we do, but we will look into it. And if we have um, the questioner's details, we can follow up on that. Great, next one is, is this the same way that Office 365 service encryption works? So not quite. Um, without getting into any specifics of Office 365, this is uh, confidential VMs are primarily a hardware based um, solution. So we harness the power of hardware to perform a lot of the encryption um, as opposed to various software as a service and platform offerings. Great. Um, next one. Could you please describe the difference between trusted VM and confidential VM? Yeah, so one way to think about confidential VMs and maybe taking a step back. So trusted VMs is a term that I think we used in the past, but the actual uh, term 
today is Trusted Launch, which I touched on. So this is a feature of VMs that you can apply to various general purpose VMs. You can create them with Trusted Launch. So one way to think of confidential VMs is that confidential VMs provide all the benefits of Trusted Launch, but many more. So Trusted Launch is about ensuring that your virtual machines, they launch with um, a trusted code base. We accomplish that using Secure Boot and using TPM for gathering measurements as the virtual machine boots. These measurements can later be attested remotely. Confidential VMs provide these benefits, but they provide a lot more. What they essentially focus on is ensuring that the underlying stack underneath the virtual machine is kept outside of the trust boundary. Like we said, the hypervisor, the cloud operating system on a confidential VM, these components um, are simply kept outside. They provide management services to the tenant virtual machines, but they do not have access to any of the data of a confidential VM, um, unlike a standard VM with trusted launch capability. So hopefully this makes um, sense. I know it, it takes some time to wrap your head around all of this. Um, but like I said before, the um, recently published YouTube video by John Seville, that does a really good job of explaining how um, Azure started with Trusted Launch and now offers confidential VMs, which are uh, a huge uh, upside to, to everything that's currently available in cloud computing and expand the benefits of Trusted Launch by leaps and bounds. Great, thank you. Um, the next one is, can I combine it with double key encryption? Yes, yeah, so one of the great things about the this technology is that in a way it runs um, orthogonal to everything else that you can do in terms of key management and key encryption, even disk encryption. You can actually have multiple layers of disk encryption. You can have, for example, what we call host-based encryption using one key and still have full disk encryption using a different key. And that also applies to double encryption. So um, whatever other encryption options you have on Azure, you can still use them and you can use them in in parallel in a way, creating effectively creating several layers of encryption. Of course, performance might be impacted, but that is absolutely possible. Great. Um, next one, is memory forensics still possible? Right, so with memory encryption at the hardware level, there are some limitations, so, or limitations to the cloud, I should say, to the cloud operator. So there are various, um, diagnostics that we cannot take with confidential VMs. Uh, we cannot take various forms of memory dumps or or we could, but they're encrypted and we have nothing useful to do with them. Um, so there could be some implications in terms of debugability, supportability, the ability to help customers run into some rare instances where they really need support in terms of um, understanding what went wrong. So you should uh, consider that, that that is something to take into account that our um, support personnel may not be able to do as much when it comes to a confidential VM. That being said, there are two ways to think about supporting a virtual machine. You can either support it through the front door, what we call the data plane, logging into the VM and remotely administering it using something like remote desktop or SSH, um, that doesn't change in any way, okay? Because if you think about it, a confidential VM is a VM and it still offers um, the same functionality once you're inside the virtual machine. So from that perspective, there is no difference. And the truth of the matter is that this is how Azure supports customers, the vast majority of the cases. Um, the other approach is using what we call the control plane. It is essentially trying to service a virtual machine without logging into that virtual machine. Um, and in that case, the options are more limited with a confidential VM. Great, thank you. Um, the next question, uh, is migration from public cloud to private cloud available? From public cloud to private cloud? Yeah. 
so taking I, I think we need maybe some more context into this question so what is um what is the asset that we're looking to migrate from the public cloud to the private cloud i, I think that that's something we should uh, better understand to be able to answer this okay um while we're waiting for that we have one more uh, with the source code stolen by the recent threat actors of Azure Lapsus, what level of risk introduction occurred into a product like this, and what are you doing to mitigate it? Um, I don't have information about Lapsus. I'm not aware that it affected this product in any way. Okay. Um, well, that's all the questions we had. Um, so I would like to thank Eden for being our guest today and for an excellent presentation. And thank you to the rest of the team who helped answer questions. At the same time, I would like to remind the listeners that the best way to ensure you don't miss any future webinars or major announcements is to visit our landing page at aka.ms slash security community. And while there, you'll find easy ways to navigate and find the resources and learning content relevant to our security products and their communities. A good start would be browsing our bite-sized product videos, ninja trainings, recordings of past webinars, GitHub communities, and more. We love to hear your feedback on how we can improve these webinars. Please take a minute submitting your webinar feedback at aka.ms slash security webinar.